psychologists talk about the fact that even though we present ourselves as one person to the world around us and to different people, we might kind of wear different aspects of our personality, but even though we're one person, um, psychologists tell us, and when we know that this is true, that we have different conversations going on inside our head. Isn't that right? I mean, it's so universally true that we kind of poke fun at it, right? And we kind of like, you know, but it's true that in a given situation, it's difficult to decide, you know, it's difficult to, it's difficult to decide something because you have one voice telling you, yes, go ahead and risk things. And you have another voice telling you, no, you better play it safe. I know a guy that risked that once. Isn't that right? You've got these different voices playing around inside your head. I want to expound on that a little bit, uh, borrowing from the work of, a, of an author and a speaker, um, Erica, Erica Fox. She talks about these mindsets that we have and these different voices. That are, it's actually a very fascinating work, Erica Fox, and she, she talks about how it's like you have to negotiate with yourself and come to a decision. It's, it's very interesting. I want, to, I want to springboard from that and talk about the mindsets that we bring to, to our spirituality, to when it comes to you and God. The mindsets that we bring when we, when we come to church. Let's, let's just kind of camp out there for a second. Because in your head, like in my head, there's this voice that I would say is your religious mind. And I don't necessarily mean religious in a bad way. I just mean religious as in I've been there, I've heard it, I've seen it, I've always done it like this. A religious perspective, not in a negative way, but just in a way that says there's routine here, there's tradition here. I believe that this is the way that I approach God. I'm used to God doing this, and I'm used to it looking like that. This is the part of our minds that says, says, you know, we've always done things a certain way, and if we're honest, we like the comfort of that. Isn't that true? Is anybody in touch this morning with the religious mind, the mindset that's kind of in your head? It's kind of like, I've been here, I've done this before, this is, this is where it sits. Anybody in touch with that this morning? Okay. All right. All right, you know, me too, me too, thank you, okay, yeah. So there's a, there's a thing in us that likes the comfort of routine. This is the mindset that gets messed up when things go differently than planned. Have you ever been in a service where that happens? Huh? Where is it? Well, is anybody in control here? You know, like, what's going on? This is not like my other church, all that, right? I mean, this is the mindset that, that kind of squeaks sometimes, right? So you've got that mindset. But also in your mind, like in my mind, is this spiritual hunger, part of you, right? The, the voice in your mind that would say, you know what? God's got to be bigger than what I've seen so far. How many of you ever thought that? Mm -hmm. If God is really who he said he is, then why doesn't he just come down here and bust the walls off of this place, bust the parameters off of my life and do something amazing? How many of you are in touch with that part, right? The, the spiritual hunger part of your mind. This is the part of you that wants new things when it comes to you. And God, it's part of you that's, that's ready for change, yeah? Change. You know, everybody says, you know, people don't like change, but it's just a matter of when that change comes, really, isn't it? I mean, we change our hair, we change our clothes, at least hopefully we do. We change, you know, we change, we, we reno our houses, we change where we live, we change where we go to school or work because we like change, right? So when change comes and it comes in the right way, we have an appetite for it. This is the part of you that's willing to experiment. I mean, the, the religious mindset, the, the, the other voice in our head would say, no, 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 play it safe. What will people think? Yeah? The, the spiritual hunger mindset says, who cares what people think? I'm just going to try something new. Yeah? All right. How many of you with me this morning? You good? You good? All right. This is the mindset that recognizes, uh, that recognizes um, the need that the old doesn't fill. Now, if you get serious about it, it's the part of you that's like, I am really hungry for something from God here. I am really thirsty for something from God. Yeah? That if God is a God that, that is the bread of life, if God is the God that will pour water on the thirsty land, my heart is hungry for something that only God can do. It's the hungry part of you. Right? That's the part of you that says, God, you know, on a core level, on a deep level, God, I need something from you here. There's the religious mind, the spiritual hunger mind. Then there's the theoretical mind. And uh, some of us are experts in this. And, and, you know, if you live in Christianity or spend you know, a lot of time studying Christianity, this is kind of a place to camp out, a voice that we listen to. The theoretical mind that hears new truth and says, huh, I wonder what it would be like if somebody tried that. Right? It's theoretical. 
You know, it kind of shies away from application. It's more kind of theoretical. And I wonder what would happen if. And that's a very interesting idea. I wonder where else it is in the Bible. You know, this is the part of your brain that if you let it, it will talk to you about abstract things, right? It plays with, plays with thoughts and ideas and, and, and I wonder and, and the theories that would be around that. It's somewhat personally removed from application because it's just all, it's just all ideas, right? And, you know, and that's a great voice to listen to because if it's just all ideas, then that's pretty safe, <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, no one's, you know, it's, it's just all pretty safe. It's just ideas. So you have the religious mind. The Hunger Games, I mean, mind. You've got the theoretical mind, and then you've got the, you have the practical mind. Right? This, is, this is a voice that a lot of us listen to when it comes to spirituality all the time. You have this practical voice going on in your head, and, and I don't know if you've ever thought this. You can be honest just for a moment. Have you ever, have you ever heard like a preacher talking about you know, some truth or whatever, and you're kind of thinking to yourself, yeah, but that wouldn't work in my family? Hmm? You know, or, or thought, he don't go to work, well, I go to work. <laughs> you know, that ain't going to work. Yeah, you just kind of like, you know what, you doubt the application of it. Or, or you're in a message and you're like, oh, this is so true. I want this truth in my life, but how, how can I do this, preacher? Yeah, yeah like that's, that's the practical side of you talking. Like, you know, it's a, it's a great idea. It's a great thought. It's a great, but how can I do this? You know, you hear a truth and you're like, but, but how? It's the part of you that says, okay, wait, can you formula this for me for a minute? You know, so if I do such and such, that X, Y, Z will happen. Is that what you're telling me? If I do such and such, X, Y, Z will happen because you want a formula. You want to know that it's going to work. You want it to be practical. It's the practical mindset. I want to say this morning that we have all those mindsets, all those voices in our heads when it comes to our spirituality all the time. Erica Fox talks about the different voices in your head, not these ones, and she's, she's used, she uses other ones for like business and, and so on and so forth and, and, and personal leadership. But she said the voices in your head, I believe this is her analogy, she says it's like musicians. Tell me if this isn't true. This is true for me. She says it's like musicians all in the same room, all doing their own thing, playing their own song in their ah. own keys, and it's like, ah! It's like chaos, yeah? Isn't that right? Yeah. Isn't that true? Versus... Someone that's in control of that room, that is the, as she would say, Erica, the, the captain of that room, and can bring order to those different voices and make it sound something beautiful. I don't know what Erica Fox's um, spiritual affiliation is, but man, you know, in hearing this conversation and preparing for this message, I thought, here's... Here's, here's where the rubber meets the road for us as people that follow Jesus. This is what it's like. If you don't already, when you follow Jesus, this is what it's like. You've decided, as someone to follow, as follow Jesus, you've decided to make him that umpire. To make God that captain. Let me, let me um, clarify. You lead you. The core of who you are. See, you're not just the religious, I just want it the same every time person. That's not core to who you are. You're not the, I want to experiment all the time and I don't need any parameters around this and I'm just spiritually hungry. You're not just that. You're not just a, a theory walking around. That's not, that's not true to the fullness of who you are. And you're not just practical, make it practical. I just want practical, I want a formula. That's not who you are either. These are voices in your head, but the core of who you are, the Bible talks about it and it says, it is your spirit. You are not your thoughts and your feelings and the things and the voices in your head. You are not all that. You are governed and controlled, the Bible says, by your spirit. Y'all with me, believers? You with me? And so here's what the Bible would say. The Holy Spirit, God, in your spirit is the captain and the umpire of your thoughts and your life. Your spirit, the core of who you are, filled with God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, is the one that gets to dictate and control and hear from the different voices and choose a course of action. It's the Holy Spirit in your spirit that's in charge. It's your core self that's the captain of your thoughts in partnership with the Holy Spirit. 
I'm going to unpack this, show you a little bit how this works. We're launching today into a series on the Holy Spirit. And one of the reasons why we camp out and we talk about this as a church, you know, specifically Holy Spirit, is because, well, God the Father, we can picture him. You know, I mean, he's the Father. And we maybe know what we think, what we know what that would be like and how we can experience him. Jesus, who's also equal with God and is God, well, we know that, you know, we can read about Jesus in the, in the stories that are presented to us in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. I mean, we've got lots of narrative about Jesus and what he was like and the things that he said. And so that's easy to picture. And we can, we can flow with that. And, and we can go to Jesus when we pray. But there's a third member of the Trinity, what we call the Godhead, the, the God three in one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And here's where our imagery and our understanding and our approach to the Holy Spirit, it can be like, you know, there's a void there oftentimes in our lives. And so we like to camp out, we like to talk about the Holy Spirit. And uh, one of the reasons why I really love to do so is because when we talk about him, it's like he kind of gets closer to listen to what we're saying, and uh, great things can happen. For the Christian, it's him in my spirit, in our spirit, that dictates and controls our lives because it's his job. Holy Spirit, it's his job to help you with you. It's the Holy Spirit's job to help you with you, to help you lead you, to help you know what direction to go, what choices to make, and what to think, and what voices to listen to. It's the Holy Spirit's job to help you with you, to get you thinking the right way, on the right track, and in the plan of God for your life. It's pretty, pretty crucial, wouldn't you say? It's God's mechanism for how to get you where you need to go, is to put His Spirit, Him, in your spirit as the umpire and the captain of your life so that he can dictate and control where it is that we go. Yet, it's the least known member of the Godhead. And so, we're going to unpack it for a few weeks and we're going to get acquainted, reacquainted with Holy Spirit. We're going to get established, maybe reestablished in our relationship with the Holy Spirit. And we're going to open the doors of our hearts wide to receive the more of what Holy Spirit has for us. Are you ready? Because we know in this church, there's always more when it comes to the Holy Spirit. I grew up uh, in a Baptist church. I loved my upbringing. Would not trade it for anything because I loved how grounded and how under understanding I felt I was of the Bible and, and God from such an early age. I mean, it was phenomenal growing up. Uh, my father was a, a, a pastor in England and then moved over at uh, the Southwest Baptist Convention in the Maritimes. And, uh, and so I grew up, grew up in church. It wasn't, though, <clears throat> I, I felt like I had the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God in me. I'd, I'd accepted God at an, at an early age and, and told that story before. But it wasn't until I met uh, Mara, my wife, that I was exposed to the fact that there was more in God than what I'd experienced so far. Here was, this, here was this girl, talking about Mara, to become my wife, here was, this, here was this girl that exhibited the fruits of the Spirit in abundance. If you know Mara, that's true. I mean, she just, she just she's, she's awesome. And exudes the Spirit of God. And she believed in all kinds of things that I thought were not for today, that, that God just didn't do anymore. She believed, for instance, that you could be supernaturally healed. That God had a power that he would release or that he had released already. And that you could join into that power of healing and that you could be healed in your body. She believed that. She believed that, um, you know where the Bible, the Bible actually talks about this. I don't know how many of you know, but where the Bible talks about speaking in another language under the unction of the spirit of God that was in you. She believed in that. She believed that you could just, you know, like flip a switch and just start talking in tongues, talking in the spirit. She believed that a God would give you wisdom for somebody else and that it was your job to go minister that to that person. <laughs> Just to walk up to them and say, hey, I feel like God was you know, saying something about you to me and I want, I want to share it with you. She felt like that, that the Spirit of God you know, would tell her things that were to come, like things in the future, that so she would be ready for them. She believed all these things. She believed that there was actually a spiritual gift of faith where you could pray, believing something, and see it happen. And I knew because I, was, I grew up in church that she was all wrong. 
that those things just didn't happen anymore. Like, I knew that. I, I, you know, that, that's kind of fairly settled. But yet, here was this person that was wrong, that was way happier than I was, and way more filled with the Spirit than I was, and exuding the fruits of the Spirit. And so, you know, well, you hang around a pool long enough, and, and you come to find out, you know, you're going to fall in. Isn't that right? And so I remember this one time. Growing up in church, had all of God, all of the understanding of the Bible that I thought that I needed. I found myself walking through this field, and I, it was at night, I had a night job, and I was walking through a field at night, and I felt like God was there, and, uh, and this thought came to me. Why don't you just believe it all? Why don't you just believe everything that your fiancé believes, the, the person that you hope to marry? Like, why, did, why don't you just choose to believe it all? And we had spent hours debating these things back and forth, and I knew that I was right. <laughs> and here's this voice saying, why don't you just choose to believe it all? Why don't you literally just flip the switch, just move the lever, and just choose to believe it? Like, why don't you just... <laughs> Maybe it was because it was a night job, and I am so blindingly tired. Maybe because... <laughs> Maybe because there was just a part of me that I wasn't in touch with that was really hungry for something that was more real than you know what I had experienced so far just at this stage in my life. I don't know, whatever the reason was, I decided I'm just going to believe. I'm, I'm just, I've just chosen to believe. I just choose to believe. And I remember stopping and I remember looking up and I remember saying, I believe, I choose, I choose to believe God. I believe all that. In an Instant, I felt this incredible joy come over me. This is a little bit difficult to explain if you're, you're not used to this experience. But this encounter with God, one of the things that happened with me is that this, this flow from down here, it sounds so funny, but this, this unction, this, this thing that happened down in my spirit began to pour out of me. And out of me came this, like this language just kind of like flowed out of me, you know, like, hang on, I can explain everything. It was just a little fight. Yeah. But that's what happened. It just kind of flowed out of me. That night at work, I think people were, you know, working, you know, working far away from me as possible because I, you know, I had some headphones in listening to some worship and under my breath was this, God, yeah, get back and back and back. What's wrong with him? You know, do you want to come to my church? No, no, that's fine. You know, I don't, I don't know, but I, I was, I was just overcome with this, and from that point on, this, this vista opened up for me that there was so much more in God than I'd ever experienced before. It, 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 it was, it was unbelievable. Why? Because of a little shift in my heart that God did, and the overflowing presence of the Lord upon my life. It guided me and it helped me. That's his job, is to help us receive the fullness of what Jesus paid for when he died for us. That's the Holy Spirit's job, to lead our life, to help us with ourselves. Why? Because there's, there's always more. You and I, we can experience more of the Holy Spirit, no matter how far we feel like we've gotten with him so far. Come on now, some of us, you know, decades in, right? There's more of the Spirit of God for you. More depth in the relationship that you have with the Holy Spirit. For some of, some of you, you might feel, you know, like, I feel like I'm lagging far behind, you might say. You're like, like how do I, how, you know, maybe, maybe I'm just not wired that way. Maybe I just, I'm never going to sense His presence or feel like that or have that kind of story. You know, maybe you feel like you're lagging behind. No, listen, there is more for you, and it's right around the corner. Just for the seeking, just for the looking, just for the God, come do that with me. There is more for you. The Holy Spirit wants to sit as the captain of your heart and say, come on now. There is more. Follow me there. Follow me there, says the Holy Spirit. You can experience more of the Holy Spirit in your life when it comes to his purpose. I'm going to take you to John chapter 16. John 14, 15, 16. You know, in a lot of your Bibles, it'll be all red because this is just stuff that Jesus said. We're going to go there this morning in John chapter 14. You can experience more of God's purpose in your life. I'm going to show you how this works today. John chapter 16, verse 5. Jesus is talking and he said, and, and he talks, he's talking to his disciples, his followers, and he says, Now I'm going to go away to him who sent me. Who, who did he mean? Jesus is saying, Now I'm going to go away to him who sent me. Who did he mean? 
God the Father, right? He's talking right before he dies. He says, now I'm going to go away to him who sent me. And none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. In other words, they took it as a physical like absence and physically Jesus was going to the Father. And so that was, that was true. But they, they saw it as a loss, right? And so they're sad and like, uh-oh, Jesus is going away. And then Jesus comes up with this statement in verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Well, hang on a second. How many of you have wished that you could be back there with Jesus and his disciples so that you could ask him your questions? Yeah. So you could say, could you help me with this? You know, Jesus, what should I do about these things in my life right now that I'm just not sure what to do? You know, don't you wish that you were right there to ask your questions to Jesus? And yet Jesus says, listen, it's to your advantage that I leave because here's what's going to happen. For if I do not go away, the helper, notice in your Bible, it's capital H, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So you can see the, the Trinity, the triune Godhead here. We covered this in our foundations class, right? You can, you can see it all. It's all right there. Like Jesus, God is saying, I'm going to go be with the Father, God. And if I don't go, the other, the, not the other God, God, the Spirit is not going to come and be with you. But because I go, the Spirit of God is going to come. He said, I will send him to you. Verse 8, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and righteousness of judgment. Of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. You know, I've wanted to say that to Spencer, my three-year-old, many times. <laughs> Verse 13. However, when he, talking about the Spirit, Holy Spirit, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. There's more of the Holy Spirit when it comes to his purpose for you. God wants to lead you into all truth. You might remember in John 14, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life, the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit wants to lead you towards the truth of Jesus, lead you towards Jesus, closer and closer to Jesus. And in John 8, you might remember it says this. You could probably fill in the blank. Some of you have been around church circles so long. He says, when you know the truth, it will. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit's going to lead you into all truth. That's closer and closer and closer to Jesus and what Jesus is for you in this season of your life. He wants to lead you closer to Jesus. And when you find the truth that's in Jesus, not just the truth, but the truth that you need for your life, when you find out what to do with you, what voice in your head to listen to, where it's going when you let the Holy Spirit lead you, help you lead you, when you, when you come to the Holy Spirit like that, you have freedom. Because the truth sets you free. It leads you into freedom. Yeah? So here's a... Here's how it works. I mean, imagine you you grew up feeling kind of feeling this rejected. You know, some people grow up like this. It's almost like an assignment of a spiritual enemy over a person where they grow up feeling rejected. Maybe maybe an absent father, or maybe you know maybe no parents, and you had to you know you were find, found yourself needing to get adopted, and, and just the way that you know maybe bounced around and out of like foster homes, or maybe it was maybe you had a, like a good strong nuclear nucleus of family, but maybe it was. I don't know, just the way friends treated you. You just always had this issue with, with friends and just feeling on the outside and, and feeling kind of rejected. And it's like this cloud that has kind of stayed with you all the way through your, through your adult, adult life. The Holy Spirit in your spirit. Imagine that this is the case for you. Maybe it is. The Holy Spirit in your spirit will lead you to the truth. The truth of Jesus, which is he died for you. He loves you. He picked you. There is nobody more valuable to him than you. If you were the only one on the earth, then he would have died for you because he loves you. And the rejection complex mindset would be broken off of your life and you would be set free. That's the way it works. The Holy Spirit helps you, lead you closer and closer and closer to Jesus until you're free. Well, think about it, if you will, in terms of maybe in your career, maybe in what you do for a living. How many know it's possible to walk in, in, in destiny? 
It's possible to walk in the middle of God's plan for your life. But you might say, well, I feel far from that. I don't even know what God wants me to do. The Holy Spirit will show you step by step how you can live in the fullness of God's destiny. You will have the freedom of doing what you love, of being alive every day because you love what you do. Or perhaps you're on a relationship trajectory that you're like, I don't want to end up like this. I think I'm going to end up lonely. I think I'm going to end up divorced or divorced again or divorced again and again. Or I don't know what's going on here, but I've, I don't like this trajectory in my marriage or in my family. Maybe it's a relationship thing for you. I don't have any friends. I know what's going on. The Spirit of God in you will lead you into all truth. Hear me out. There is more of his purpose for you. You'll find yourself. You follow the spirit of God in a marriage, you will find yourself. You follow the spirit of God in a relationship, in, in, the, in the friends that are around you, and coworkers. You follow the spirit of God in that you will find yourself in the freedom of love and relationships as it was designed to be. He brings rescue. And he brings redemption to all areas of our lives. There's more for you and me in that. And so let me ask you, what questions are you asking him right now? What truth do you need to be led into? That's a good question. Yeah. Spirit of God, lead me into all truth. What's true right now, what I need from Jesus right now. Lead me to the part of Jesus that has this answer. What questions are you asking him? right now what truth do you need to be led into oh i say to you let him be the captain of your soul the spirit of god the holy spirit there's more there's more there's more for you not only of his purpose but of his presence there's more for you in that if you're taking notes the first way that that kind of un unpacks in our lives is that there's more of his presence upon us more of his presence upon us you can see this when, when the disciples were in the upper room. This is like the very first meeting of the church and the disciples, they were, they were all there. They were wondering, you know, God had told them to go and wait for the presence of God, for the Holy Spirit to be poured out. And it says as they, as they were there in a room, it says um, that suddenly there came a sound from heaven and as of, a, it was as of a mighty rushing wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting and then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues see there it is yeah there it is as the Spirit gave them utterance or enabled them to speak I want to show you that passage just right of Acts chapter 2 because of this it's the Spirit of God upon them but you can also see in here that the Holy Spirit filled them. There is more of both for you and for me. The Holy Spirit, he comes into a room. You understand what I'm saying? Like, where you walk into a room and you're like, what is going on? There's, there's something going on. Listen, if you can walk into a house and you'd be like, man, someone's been fighting in here. Do you ever have that? Someone's like, a, I don't know if you were spiritual about it. You'd be like, there's a spirit of strife in here. Or something's going on. Do you, you ever walk into a place? You're like, oh, no, I think I'm going to go now. Yeah. Or conversely, you ever walk into a house? I've been into some of your houses. You walk into the house and you're like, there's this lightness and there's this freedom and there's like an openness there. If you, are you, like, we're smarter than just our heads. Yeah. Like there's a spiritual awareness. Right. About what's going on and what's in a room other than the people and the furniture and the pictures and the paintings. True. Well, if it's true that there's stuff in rooms, how much more true is it that the Holy Ghost can be in a room? Yeah. That Holy Spirit can come and descend down upon a people, upon a group, upon a person. Hmm? You ever felt that? You ever felt the Spirit of God on you? There was, this, there was this one moment I was sitting in a vehicle. The rest of the family had gone in. This is years and years ago. The rest of the family had gone in to get something. They were coming right back out. And I was sitting in a vehicle all by myself. And I felt the Spirit of God in the vehicle. I was in a van, I think. I was sitting towards the back, and the Spirit of God, I felt, I felt God like in the room. Like, not because I was like, God, could you come visit me now? But because there was something that he wanted to do. You know? He was there. And I felt the Spirit of God in the room, and I knew that he was there. And suddenly I had this insight. I knew, like I knew, like I knew. I can't describe it other than to say that. I knew that I could ask him absolutely anything, and the answer would be like that. 
But his presence was like right in the room. I couldn't think of anything to ask him, and then everybody came back into the vehicle. But for that one moment, oh, so what is that? The Spirit of God moves into a place, into a room, into a family, upon a family, upon a church for a purpose, for a reason. You know, when we all come in, you know, on a Sunday morning, you know, I, I love it because it, it goes from like just a room. You know, we try to set the atmosphere beforehand, you know, with our praying. But with all of your singing and your worship to God, God loves that. And the Bible says that when we draw close to him, huh, he draws close to us. And, and he comes in, and it's like as we're all singing and opening up our hearts to God. And so we're just encouraging, like all the music is, is to do that, right? To encourage us, to get us to the place where our hearts are open to God and we worship. And the presence comes in. Do you ever feel after our worship that man, there's something? Something's going on. Like God wants to do something here. Yeah, you can. You can feel like that. You can be so in tune with what God wants to do in a place. Because the Spirit of God, He comes down upon us. There's more of that for you and for me. You can read all the way through the scriptures from the from the Old Testament where the Spirit of God was on the waters. Yeah. To the New Testament where He comes into a room where He fills a place. There's more for us in that. There's more of the Spirit of God upon us. You want that, church? Yes. And there's more of the Spirit of God within you and me. His presence upon and his presence within. You can look at this with me in Romans chapter 8. The, spirit, the presence of God upon us and within us. Romans chapter 8, 14 is the verse that I just want to draw your attention to. And it says this, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, hmm? These are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Daddy God! Isn't that cool? It's by the spirit that we do that, the spirit within. And here's what it says in verse 16. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. This is the Spirit of God within. As I'm minding my own business going about throughout my day, the Spirit of God within reminds me whose I am. Reminds me of the power that I have because I carry Him. Reminds me what belongs to me because I am His. Right? That's what it says. The Spirit of God within. The Spirit of God Himself bears witness with our spirit. The capital S, Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, bears witness with my spirit that we are children of God. And then if we are children, we are heirs. There's more of that for you and for me. There's a greater awareness that I, that you can carry around from day to day of the Spirit of God within and what he is bringing to our attention. So I ask you this morning, what need do you have? I'm ask, I want to ask you by the Spirit, almost spirit to spirit this morning, what need do you have for more of the Holy Spirit's presence? Is it in a marriage, in a family, in a father-son, mother-daughter, mother-son, father-daughter relationship? Is it, is it at work where you just need to carry an awareness of who he is in you because you forget about all that and you end up in all kinds of relational stuff and, you know, it's just not effective? Like, where is it that you need the Spirit of God upon you? Is it when you're up early in the morning and you're thumbing through the pages of Scripture saying, God, I need you, is it there? Where is it in your life that you need more of the presence of God? That you would say, if God could visit me there upon or within or something, man, that's what I need. Where is it? Where do you have need for His presence? And there's more for you. There's more for you and me, not only in his purpose, in his presence, but in his promise. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but in Matthew 28, right before Jesus left the earth, these were his instructions. He said, go out and spread the message. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And I am with you to the end of the age. There's more of his purpose, more of his presence, but there's more of this promise <coughs> unwrapped in your life that the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, that he is 
with you. Like a greater revelation. I don't know, there's a, there's a song that we sing lately, at least I think we sing it here. It's like, let us become more aware of your presence. Yeah? Because there's an awareness that you and I can have, that we can walk in, that his presence, the Holy Spirit, that he's with us. I mean, you, we, some of us go to conferences and church services like this or whatever, or midweek meetings so that we can feel the presence of God and sense him with us. But it only whets our appetite for what we can have outside these doors as we walk down the hallways at work or at school. Isn't that right? I mean, the spirit of God is with us all the time. And there's more of this promise that he wants to unpack in our lives. He is with us always, which begs the question, if that's true, where are we taking him? I, that's a sobering thought, really, isn't it? You know, what is he witness to if he is with us always? You, you want to know, know a trick how to curb sin or curb a, a negative habit that's in your life? You want to know how to curb it, like to cut it off? Whenever you're like right in the moment of decision, right? Because habits have a sequence and there's a decision there. We just don't know it, right? Whenever you're about to criticize somebody or to gossip or to go south down that road and you don't really shouldn't and you, you know, just, just, you just, just need a moment. Or glorify God. Say, Holy Spirit, come and be with me right here, right now. Right here in this moment. Like right here, right now, God, I need you. You know, just, just, just take a pause for a moment and say, Spirit of God, fill this moment right here. God, be with me now. Temptation, please. Come on. You resist him. You push him away. You say, well, I deserve this or I need this or... Push him away, and around the mountain we go. Invite him in. Change, change, change happens on the inside. And so I want to ask you this morning, where are you taking him? And further to that, think about this. What could he accomplish there? If you were to focus on him in that moment. All right, before we're done this morning, I just want to, like, quick review. There's more for you when it comes to relationship with the Holy Spirit. You agree with that this morning, that there is more? That there's more, no matter how far we've walked with him so far, you, there is more. There are more presents under the tree than what you have opened, yeah? There's more to God. There's more on the table than what you've eaten so far. There's, there's more, all right? So there's more for you when it comes to relationship with the Holy Spirit. By way of review number two, you and I get to ask him, to, we get to ask him to partner afresh with us in being the captain of our thoughts and of our lives. If it's true that there's other voices, and it's true, spiritually speaking, there's other voices in our, in our heads when it comes to us and God, other, other you know, we, we owe it to ourselves not to let just the religious thinker or the theoretical thinker or the practical thinker, that won't work here or that won't work there. We owe it to ourselves not to let those other other voices dominate. We owe it to ourselves to say, God, I want to partner afresh with you for you being the captain of my thoughts and of my life. There's more for you when it comes to relationship with the Holy Spirit. Number two, ask him to partner afresh with you in being the captain of your thoughts and your life. And number three, I just want to leave you with this. What questions? And again, I feel it this morning. Spirit to spirit, I ask you, what questions are you asking him? What demand on his presence are you placing? And where are you taking him in your life? What questions are you asking? What demand on his presence are you placing? And where are you taking him in your life? So this morning, what I want us to do just for a few moments is just to open up our hearts to him and say, okay, God, if there's more, I'm ready. And I invite you. I invite it. I invite more in. So let's go ahead and put our Bibles and whatnot aside. Why don't you stand up with me? And let's just kind of pursue God for a moment here before we're done this morning. Let's do it together. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you're watching us on Periscope this morning or by um, YouTube after the fact, this can happen for you just like it's happening for us right here. Just go ahead, close your eyes. Or 
Lock yourself in with God. Everybody in this place, let's just go ahead. It's just you and him. Not about the people around you. Not about what's going to happen next or what's for lunch. Uh-uh, this is about you and him. This is a moment between you and him. So let's just go ahead. Let's focus in right now. Jesus, this is for you. God, we've come and we've met some people and we've sang these songs and we've heard some verses from the Bible. It's an invitation that there's more. So begin to talk to him there. You go ahead and begin to speak to him, just heart to heart. Oh, there's so much more. <laughs> Church, we come from all kinds of spiritual backgrounds sitting here. Some of us are like, what? There's more? I never thought of that before. Others are like, oh yeah, there's way more and you guys need it. <laughs> Some of us are like, God, is he even real? Others, maybe your spiritual background has caused you to be a bit disillusioned, a bit sort of resigned to the fact that maybe you're just not cut out for more from God. The word of God speaks loud and clear this morning to say that there's more for you. There's more for you and him. There's more relationship. There's more purpose. The Spirit of God wants to come upon you. He wants to overflow within you. So Holy Spirit, I ask you. Holy Spirit, I ask you. I ask you to come right now in this place. Descend down upon us. Stir up your presence within us. Holy Spirit, we invite you. 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 Holy Spirit, we invite you. Holy Spirit, how we need you. Go ahead, you tell him this morning. You tell him for you. Oh, how we need you. Holy Spirit, come. Visit us here. Visit us in that area. Oh, Holy Spirit, come. Spirit of God, come. Spirit of God, more and more and more. Holy Spirit, come. Spirit of God, 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 come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Spirit of God, come. Spirit of God, come. Do you want it this morning? Do you want it? Let's just spend a few minutes asking him. If you feel this this morning like I feel it, you know what? The Spirit comes to help make us hungry, to help get us in the right place to receive. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. If you feel it this morning, just go ahead and begin to ask Him. Invite Him. Invite Him. Let Him know you mean it. Holy Spirit, come. 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 We invite you. We invite you. God, right into these vessels, right into our hearts. God, more and more. The Bible talks about keep on being filled with the Spirit of God. So you might feel like you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, but there's more. Keep on being filled. Keep on being filled. We turn our hearts to heaven right now to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, we invite you. Oh, Holy Spirit, we invite you. Holy Spirit, we invite you. If you would like to this morning, I encourage you to come on up to the front. You can just come and you can stand right here just like this, just up to the front, just make a line. 
and just be open to the Spirit of God. And we can pray with you for more of the Holy Spirit. If you'd like to do that, go ahead. Just while I'm talking, I'm praying. Just go ahead. Just slip out of your seats and come on up to the front. But God, we're a church that's hungry for you. God, we're families that are hungry for you. Come on. We're a family that's hungry for you. A church family that's hungry for you. Father, we desire more of the Holy Spirit. We desire more of the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. If that's you this morning, just join us up front for just a time of prayer. I just want to pray for impartation of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Because there's more for you. There's more. You know, I sense this morning when we were singing the first song that there's breakthrough. There's breakthrough that God wants to perform in our lives. Holy Spirit, come. 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 Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Ooh. <laughs> I feel it this morning, the Spirit of God is here, come on, you drink, you take a drink, you take a drink, isn't it time for something new, you take a drink, take a drink, right where you're at. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Come on, if you know how to pray this morning, let's just go ahead and pray. Holy Spirit, come. If you know how to pray in the Spirit, go ahead and do that. This is a place where you're free to do that, just to express that, that, that prayer language before God. Go ahead and do that. We're just begin to speak it out. Begin to invite him. Begin to invite him. Let's create an openness over this whole month. Yeah? Over this whole series that we're doing as a church. This road that we're going down. Let's just invite him. Let's open up. Open up the doors and the spirit in this church to say, Holy Spirit, come. 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 Come on, let's pray, 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 pray. Holy Spirit, come. Father, we want you to come by your Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. If I could have someone come on up and help me pray for people, that'd be great, just to stand behind them. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit. Father, in Jesus' name, right now, right now, right now. Ah, shaki a bedeva, baba, sai, tia, bashu,